Ever since Nigeria's return to partisan politics in 1999, presidents and their political parties had always played a role in the emergence of National Assembly leaders. The only exception was in 2015 when Dr. Bukola Saraki, then of the People's Democratic Party, led a coalition of opposition ranking senators and a sprinkling of senators elect to upstage the well oiled structures of the majority political party in parliament, President Buhari's All Progressives Congress. The outcome was a largely robust and engaging Senate, which thrived in the role of keeping the executive arm of government on its toes for the better part of eight years. Senator Mohammed Abba Aji was the minority whip of the Fifth Senate and former special advisor to the President on National Assembly. He joins us now to discuss the President-elect and independence of the legislature. Good to have you on Newsday. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like us to start with the APC's uh, zoning of the leadership, zoning the leadership positions of the 10th National Assembly and also handpicking candidates. What do you make of that? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> although zoning is not enshrined in the APC constitution as it is in the PDP constitution, but still APC is duty bound to zone uh, important positions in the interest of uh, uh, in the interests of federal character, in the interest of fair play, in the interest of carrying everybody along. Yes, so uh, it, it cannot avoid zoning it, and it has indeed uh, zoned uh, the Senate presidency to the south south and. So, it, although it's not in its constitution, but it's still engaged in it, yes. Now, governors of the North Central Geopolitical Zones have faulted the zoning arrangement, saying it should be reconsidered to include the zone in the leadership of the Tent Assembly. Can you speak on this? Yes. Uh, I think they, they seem to think that they are left out, but I'm sure they are not left out. Uh, we still have one position that is very likely to go to them, and that is the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. That has not been zoned anywhere, and they being the only zone that is yet to benefit, uh, it's, it's expected that they will take that position. Uh, their fear will, you know, will be addressed. Now, Senator, some Nigerians are worried yeah. that the involvement of the party or possibly the president-elect uh, in zoning or in choosing the leadership of the 10th National Assembly will interfere with the independence of the judiciary, making it a rubber stamp parliament. What do you make of this? No, that's not true because uh, you can avoid it. And, and there are good reasons for that. And there uh, are conventions that, that, that support that. Uh, for example, let's start with the president-elect. The president, uh, under the presidential system, and in our system here in Nigeria, is effectively a member of the National Assembly. Not only that, he is the most important member of the National Assembly who does not sit in the House, but he is effectively a member, he is the only person that is a member, effectively a, me a member of both houses. And here is why. Uh, National Assembly is mainly in the business of making laws. And these laws are made, it's a constitutional requirement that they are made only through bills. And you know that executive bills are the majority, most of the bills that the National Assembly del deliberates upon are executive bills. They are bills of the president. And once, once they pass it and he gives his assent, without sitting among them in the chamber, he effectively has voted with those who have supported the bill. And any time he withholds his assent, he has effectively voted with those 
that have gone against the bill. And another thing that makes him the most important, aside from being effectively a member of both houses, is the fact that once he withholds his bill, uh, his assent, once he vetoes the bill, it will require two thirds of the National Assembly to override his veto. You can see that even the Senate President and the Speaker have only one vote each. But to override the President's veto, the National Assembly needs two thirds of votes. So the President is effectively a member, not a sitting member, but for all intent and purposes, a member of the National Assembly. And he has to be involved in the decision of who becomes the presiding officer of the National Assembly. Because that is the person that will work most closely with him. And the Senate president being not only the presiding officer of the, of the Senate, but also uh, the chairman of the National Assembly, uh, the, uh, raises the stakes. And the, the president has to have his way in, in, in the determination of that so that we have stability in the National Assembly that will translate into stability in the polity and therefore stability in our nation. But isn't that infring infringing on the rights of the senator-elect when the president, you know, more or less and picks who leads the Senate and who leads the House of Assembly? I'm sure there, there would be, the House of Reps, I mean, I'm sure there will be rules and guidelines, you know, guiding how this, uh, how their leadership should be chosen. Does it include the involvement of the president? Isn't that overreaching? Is that democratic? It is democratic, and, but it's not to the exclusion of the members. Members along with him and the party will decide. But in this decision, the president-elect and the party are the senior partners in this selection process. And this is not just uh, unique to Nigeria. If you look at the United Kingdom, you know, all this uh, dichotomy, you know, the, the separation of powers dichotomy, they are not hard and fast. If you look at the United Kingdom, the prime minister is a member of the parliament. In fact, if you look at the Lord Chancellor, until the reform of, I think, 2005, he was in all the three arms. He was uh, in the executive as a minister, he was uh, in the legislature as an MP, and also the head of the judiciary. So, and if you go to America from where we adopted our constitution, uh, the, the vice president of the United States is the Senate president of the American Senate. So. This dichotomy uh, of separation of powers is not hard and fast, you know. So uh, you have one government, so you can compartmentalize it, you know, strictly and, and say that uh, uh, the, the legislature will be a no-go area for the president. In executive presidency, the president is an executive president. And he has enormous powers, uh, you know, and that's what's intended uh, in our constitution. Senator, opposition parties in the 10th National Assembly that will constitute the 10th National Assembly have formed an alliance, you know, amongst themselves, believing they have the numbers or what they term the greater majority to determine the leadership of the 10th Assembly. Now, how do you see this playing out? If they successfully pull it off, like what happened in 2015, what impact will it have on the incoming administration? Uh, it will not go to what happened in 2015. Uh, there are what, about eight political parties that have contributed members to the Nigerian Senate. Uh, APC obviously has the largest, you know, uh, followed by PDP uh, and, then, and then the Labour Party. Uh, without them coming together as to our, uh, even the structure in the Senate and in the House of Reps has organized them. I remember when we were 
in the, before, before our time, before, before the Fifth Senate, there used to be a leader of, say, ANPP, leader of AD, leader, you know, each party had its own leader. But, uh, but, but later it was organized, the rules were changed, rules and regulations uh, of the Senate and of the House, that such that all the minority political parties will together uh, produce a minority leader and a minority whip, you know. So this organizes the House very well. So uh, the tussle will be uh, among them as to who becomes the minority leader and who becomes the minority whip. But when it comes to, to the determination of the presiding officers, you know, they will have to play along with the, with the majority party, with the president, you know. And after the presiding officers, you have the principal officers. You have, for example, the majority leader. This is a party position. So AMP, uh, APC, APC has to be involved because the majority leader of the, of the Senate and of the House are to be determined by the party that has the most members, you know. That is according to the rules and regulations of the Senate and of the House of Reps. So these are party positions. The majority leader, the minority leader, the majority whip, and the minority whip will exclusively be determined by APC, you know, as of right. Mm -hmm. So members, especially the, 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 the new members, uh, need to know that, you know, because they came on a platform uh, of a party after all, you know. And if they go and read their rules, that's what the rules say. And the rules derive uh, legitimacy from the Constitution. But, Senator... You know, in the Constitution, it provides... Cons yeah. But the opposition members could actually throw their weight behind another APC candidate that was not chosen by the National Working Committee or the President-elect. What happens in that situation? Uh, say that again. I'm saying that the opposition members, they could decide to support. You know, we have some people within the yeah. APC that have said they do not agree with the candidate that has been um, nominated as, a, as, as the president of the Senate, as the Senate president, and also as a speaker of the House of Reps. So I'm saying what if these opposition members th throw their weight behind other APC candidates that are also contesting for this position, but were not handpicked by the National Working Committee? I believe the party will charge them of anti-party, and I don't think they will do that. What happened in 2015 has never happened before, and it happened mainly because uh, President Buhari sort of abdicated, you know. But I do not think uh, Asiwaju will abdicate. He himself being a member of the Senate before, and uh, his, his deputy, the vice president, is a member of the Senate. The party chairman uh, was a member of the Senate. The deputy chairman, Habukari, is a member of the Senate. So now, you know, the party and the executive are constituted of people who are very, very familiar with the workings of the National Assembly. So they will not allow uh, what President Buhari has inadvertently allowed and, and that has uh, pulled away control from, from under, his, uh, under him, you know. Okay, let's talk about the incoming administration. We've heard reports of the president-elect reaching out to opposition candidates, probably to form a unity government, even though we, we are not um, sure about the specific details of what uh, the meetings have been about. Do you agree with this move, if indeed he plans to form a unity government? What are your expectations from a Tinumbu presidency, especially at a time when some have accused him of playing regional politics? Well, I'm not surprised. You see, if you look at his antecedent, when he was governor of uh, Lagos, 
you know, Tenobo, Tenobo looks for merit. It's a person that actually he's, he's a team player and he is very good at putting together first 11 as, as a team. When he was governor of Lagos, you could see that he brought people regardless of their state of origin. You know, many of his cabinet members were not even Lagosians. So uh, when I see this playing out uh, at the national level uh, in his presidency, uh, not only am I not surprised, but I actually expect, expect it. I expect him because he is, he is a person that, that looks for merit. And when merit comes from anywhere, you know, he, he goes after it. So I, I will not be surprised if uh, regardless of political leaning, uh, even people who are not involved in politics at all can be brought out in, into, brought into his administration. Because everybody knows that you know, one thing he is excellent at is putting together the first 11 as a team. So I expect his ministers to be, you know, the real first, first 11 of Nigeria. Uh, and, and if some of them come from parties other than APC, uh, so be it. You know, I think, I think it's good for the country. You know, we're all Nigerians and, and everybody has the right uh, to belong to a political party of his choice. And that should not be deprived him or the president from seeking and obtaining his services if he is eminently qualified. Senator Mohammed Abba Aji, Minority Whip of the Fifth Senate and former Special Advisor on National Assembly, thank you so much for joining us on Newsday.